But in Kenya, geothermal is not all about electricity. The heat contained in geothermal steam and the liquid component known as brine is a versatile resource that is used for diverse industrial applications. These applications are technically known as direct uses. Direct use refers to use of geothermal energy for other purposes other than conversion into electricity. Normally, the steam is separated from the brine and used to turn turbines while the brine is re-injected back into the ground. The brine leaves a separator at about 150 degrees centigrade. This is a lot of energy, around 80% as only 20% is used for electricity generation. It is this massive heat, a byproduct of electricity generation, that experts have devised ways of harnessing to drive industrial production. One of the ways of direct uses is to pass the brine through a heat exchanger. The heat extracted from the brine is used to heat greenhouses, dry cereals and vegetables, and heat aquatic ponds to speed up growth of aquatic life. That is not all. This brine in its raw form is a spectacular source of recreation. It is normally injected in a pool like this one, making it an instant hit for holiday goers. Uh, Iceland has uh uh, done this uh, to a very large scale uh, where uh, uh, they have set up uh, a blue lagoon. Uh, blue lagoon uh, is just where uh, they have uh, collected and uh, you know uh, you know stored the spent brine from a power plant and uh, tourists all over the world go there for recreational purposes and, uh, uh, and it's also good for the, the skin. Besides, the energy in the geothermal fluids is also used to dry clothes, pasteurize milk, treat hides and skins, and for drying tea. Sulfur and carbon dioxide are also extracted from geothermal resource. The list is endless. This makes geothermal a prolific and lucrative resource that is cheap and is said to revolutionize Kenya's economic growth. Take Kenya for instance. Most common sources of industrial energy for process heating are industrial diesel oil, heavy fuel oil and wood pulp. These are not only expensive but are heavy pollutants. Firewood depletes our forest's cover. But replacing these costly pollutants with geothermal shows a cost reduction of up to 70% in the case of pasteurization. At GDC, we have taken note and since 2014, GDC has been carrying out research at the Meningai Geothermal Project targeting four key areas, geothermal milk pasteurization, geothermal heated laundry, and geothermal heated aquatic ponds, and geothermal heated greenhouses. This is a geothermal heated fish pond. Hot geothermal water runs in pipes, keeping the pond warm, especially at night. With heating at 29 degrees centigrade, it makes tilapia to grow at 30% faster because of improved metabolism. Then there is this, a greenhouse. So the demonstration area here is basically showing the direct use of geothermal heat um, for growing of greenhouse, um, in greenhouses, heating a greenhouse where you can have tomatoes, you can have uh, flowers, you can have anything. Here at night, when temperatures drop, the geothermal heated water is circulated inside the greenhouse through pipes to provide heating, especially at night, to regulate temperatures and humidity. Keeping the greenhouse warm accelerates growth and also prevents condensation of vapor on leaves, hence minimizing chances of fungal growth. With this technology, a farmer saves about 40% on cost of production. But that is not enough. Look at this. It is a prototype of a milk pasteurizer that uses geothermal heat. It is the containerized dairy unit um, where we are heating milk and cooling it back down in a pasteurizing process using the geothermal heat. Um, that is working very successfully on a 150 liter batch pasteurizer. Here, milk is heated to about 72 degrees centigrade for about 30 minutes to kill microorganisms and is allowed to gradually cool. Ultimately, geothermal milk pasteurization saves about 70% of the cost of energy required to process milk. The same savings go to the laundromat. 
geothermal is used to heat water for washing and drying clothes. And the fourth unit that we've got here is the, the laundry. Uh, and in the laundry, we are washing the clothes using geothermally heated water, but uh, we're also drying the clothes using geothermally heated water, and that's a new application. Some of these applications, like the greenhouses, have been done before, but the other three projects here have never been done in Kenya before. So this is, this is breaking ground. It's, it's good news. The Rift Valley, where geothermal is found, is flanked by rich agricultural zones where maize, dairy, tea, cattle, pyrethrum thrive. Instead of using electricity, heavy diesel or wood fuel for heating to process or preserve agricultural produce, geothermal energy will come in handy. It is set to change industrial processes, saving the environment and also lowering the cost of production. Back to 2015 in Meningai. It is a flurry of activity here at Well 3. Engineers and scientists are putting the final touches to the pilot projects. In a few weeks' time, GDC will be unveiling this game changer technology to investors and policymakers. These are the experts who are working round the clock. Martha Mboru. She is an engineer of over 20 years and an expert in direct users. They are working closely with this man, Bruce Knight. He is a consultant engineer with massive experience in direct users of geothermal energy. On their hands, Martha Mboru and team have a historic assignment to give Kenya and Africa a new approach of using heat from the earth for industrial production. The success of these models will expand the geothermal portfolio in Kenya. It will definitely be a game changer. And on this bright August day of 2015, all eyes are on Meningai. Investors, politicians and guests are here to witness a new chapter in Kenya's geothermal story. Today, GDC is launching the four units. Dr. Engineer Joseph Njoroge is a Principal Secretary, State Department of Energy, Ministry of Energy and Petroleum. He's also an industry veteran. On this day of August 2015, he is in Menengai to launch the pilot projects. I would dare say that today, Kenya marks a very critical turning point in the energy regime. And that is the successful piloting of four geothermal heated projects that we have seen today, attesting to our innovation and also opening up new frontiers of how energy is created and consumed in the country for national development. Going forward, geothermal heating will be an integral part of Kenya's pursuit of food security and industrialization. Indeed, the concept is proven. Greenhouse heating has shown an increase in profitability by more than 30%. It is ready for uptake. We are open for business, we are open for new ideas, and we have a full department of scientists that are fully dedicated to utilizing geothermal energy for other sources other than generation of electricity. Indeed, Kenya is ready to go big on direct uses of geothermal. And this is a block that is earmarked for industrial parks. It is along the Rift Valley where a future industrial valley will rise. Here, investors will enjoy cheaper, reliable and efficient energy than anywhere else in East and Central Africa. Kenya has such enormous geothermal reserves that there has got to be a lot of um, opportunity out there for direct use. Jack Kiruja is an engineer at GDC specializing in direct uses of geothermal energy. For Kenya to become industrialized, industrial parks are key. And one advantage that we have with areas with geothermal is that we have availability of cheap energy. And this cheap energy is going to translate into a lot of benefits for the economy because, first of all, the investors are going to have better returns from the investment and also the goods that they are producing from their factories are going to be cheaper for the population. True. And an industrial revolution is what Kenya needs in order to attain a golden age of economic growth. GDC is an integral part of this epic economic journey where geothermal is the energy of the future.